hate to ask for people to click thumbs up on a video like this, but it's the only way it's going to be seen. So make sure you click thumbs up, subscribe, and choose all notifications. Post a comment below saying you're praying for Amara or something like that. Check this out. Después verán más, pero solamente quería aclarar eso porque me, me dio mucho sentimiento que decidí ser vulnerable, ser transparente, hablar de cosas que he vivido, porque a veces uno ve a una persona, no entiende su actitud, no entiende su personalidad, no entiende ciertas cosas, pero si uno solamente se sienta por un minuto a escuchar su historia, a escuchar qué ha pasado que ha causado que esta persona tenga esa personalidad entonces a veces uno entiende eh, nada yo continúo trabajando eh, ahora mismo acabo de venir de unos ensayos porque tengo una noticia muy buena que contarles mañana otro proyecto que he estado trabajando en silencio los invito a que no se pierdan secretos de las indomables que sale el 17 de agosto lo grabé en México, fue una experiencia muy chévere, la cual con Dios delante pienso regresar, si Dios me lo permite. Eh, también este lunes sale Love in Hip Hop Miami, la quinta temporada, la cual le agradezco muchísimo a ustedes que me apoyen. Y bueno, y ahora el día... Ah, no puedo decir fecha, pues, pero también muy pronto ahora, eh, mañana les voy a contar de otro proyecto que estoy trabajando. Amén, gracias. A ver, la gente que habla en inglés, que me dijeron que no entendieron. For those that speak English and didn't understand what I said, I'm going to translate real quick. I won't take too long. I recently did this TV show called Secretos de las Indomables in Mexico. It was a great opportunity. I was out there for a week filming this show. And this very well-known actress and also singer called Judy, who's also a pastor, um, had a conversation with me in which I revealed to her that when I was 15 years old, I was raped. My first sexual experience was rape. He, um, he was a producer here in Miami called Sway. Um, I had never been with anyone ever. My mom raised me to be focused in my career, my music. I was very sheltered. Um, my mom lost three sons, buried three sons before me. I'm the only child. She immigrated to this country by herself. So my mom was always very protective of me. I was never the, the kid to be out in the street and about. I wasn't that girl, so I was kind of sheltered and I didn't, you know, I didn't have obviously the knowledge that I have today. Long story short, um, he also was a realtor. He had the keys of many empty homes. Um, he was supposed to take me to the recording studio, even though my mom had always been the one to take me to the studio on like the fifth or sixth you know, uh, opportunity. My mom couldn't take me and he offered to pick me up from my house and take me to the recording studio. He actually did pick me up, but he didn't take me to the recording studio. He took me to a home that was for sale, that was empty. Um, he pulled my hair, he ripped my clothes. That was my first sexual experience. I was raped at 15 and then um, I was embarrassed and scared to tell my mom. I didn't know how to say it. I was afraid I would get in trouble. I was gonna be looked down upon and I don't know, you're just scared. Long story short, I revealed it on the show and it, it was just a little bit hurtful to see people making fun of me. Because that's the same reason. 
Because that's the same reason why I never said anything. Because that's the same reason why I never said anything. Because I was afraid some... They would laugh at me. Or point fingers. Point fingers at me. So I never said anything. And I only did it because now that I'm in a better place in my life, I know that I'm not the only one. And like me, there's a lot of women and young girls who have been raped, molested, who have gone through situations that a lot of them will never speak about and will take to the grave with them because you're embarrassed, you're ashamed. You don't know how people are gonna look at you, how they're gonna point fingers at you. People will say it's your fault. You looked for it. What were you wearing? What did you do? Um, I feel that that's also a reason why I'm so overprotective with my girls. Because I don't trust anyone. And I know what it feels to be taken advantage of and to be forced to do something you don't want to do with your body because somebody else wants to feel good even if it's at the risk of your pain and the worst part is that when these grown men do things like that to women overall but to young girls they don't know how they damage you for life they don't know how mentally in many occasions you're never able to recoup 100%. Um, they don't know that they are damaging the little girl inside of you, the woman inside of you. And I feel that that's also, you know, a reason why I just... Maybe I don't pick the right people for relationships. I hated that I couldn't come home to my father and, and have a male figure protect me and be there for me. So I've always had to be, um, I don't know, I guess you don't have another choice but to be strong. A lot of people, which is, is obviously hurtful, say that I'm doing this for attention or for drama or this and that. I don't need it. Like, I am blessed enough, thank God, that I live well. And I have several businesses. Like, if tomorrow I no longer were to be in the entertainment industry, that's fine, you know. I've invested my money well enough that I can live from other things. It's, it's not for the attention of this. I only wanted to be honest and transparent because I know of so many women that have had private conversations with me that have gone through shit that they don't feel comfortable to, to talk about it. You feel like you have to be mute and not say anything because you don't want people to laugh at you, to make fun of you, to say you're being acting like a victim. You're doing shit for attention. Nobody wants to fucking get raped for attention. The fuck? Like, who wants that type of attention? You know what I mean? Like, who wants to publicly say they did this to me for attention? I, I don't need, I, like, if you notice, that's not the type of attention that I look for. You know what I mean? And whenever you've seen me doing some shit, please, whenever you've seen me, I mean, I can't say that because... It's my job and I have to go with it. Whatever. The people can say whatever they want. They can make fun of me as much as they want. I feel like I needed to vent and release and speak my truth. Not just for myself, but for any woman that follows me, that looks up to me, that supports me, that's going through the same thing or that has gone through anything similar. It is most definitely not your fault. 
It is most definitely not your fault. You didn't look for it. You didn't ask for it. You didn't deserve it. And if you don't want to talk about it, then don't. But if you feel like you want to liberate yourself and talk about it, then you go ahead and you do that. No matter what in the world that we live, we live in such a fucked up world that people think that getting abused and getting it's funny, it's entertaining. People would rather take out their phones and record than to actually help a woman that's going through a fucked up situation. In the world that we live in, anything that you, whenever you speak about your truth, if you speak about your abuser, if you speak about anything, you're looking for attention. You look for it. You, you, you want views. You want likes. Why are you talking about it? Why should I not talk about it? Why do I have to stay silent? I don't know. I feel like when women talk about any abuse that they've been through, like people don't really add any value to like what she's saying or the circumstances behind it. It's so annoying. It's like those things are meant to be kept secrets, family secrets. They're meant to stay with you forever and you're not supposed to talk about it. And I feel like it's so unfair Men too, men that have been raped, men that have been molested, men that have been touched without them wanting, not only men, but boys. It's so unfair that they can't speak their truth, that they can't be honest, that they can't be transparent, that they can't be vocal about their experiences without the whole world fucking being judgmental and pointing fingers and making you feel as if your feelings are not relevant, as if you should just suck it up, you know? Man, I really thought that me verbalizing my experience would be a way of letting women know that you're not by yourself you're not alone been there done that i know the feeling i get it don't let the hair makeup and lashes and all this facade for you i'm still a regular woman like the rest of y'all at the end of the day i've been through a lot of shit and it just sucks that I'm not, and sorry that I'm, you know, the Libra in me, I'm very sensitive and I cry. I guess when you're, when you have to be strong all the time, you have moments to be vulnerable and you just break down, but I don't know, it just hurt my feelings to see people make fun of me because I said that they raped me. Anyways, welcome to 2023. Where you're just supposed to stay quiet. Especially women. We're just supposed to take it. Anyways, I know. I just wanted to clarify that. Not that it matters, because people want to make judgments about you no matter what. You can show proof, you can show evidence, and people will still have to, something to say, or they still won't believe you, or they'll still make fun of you, or whatever. But fuck them. Fuck them. And to the women out there, and to the girls out there, I get it. You know? You're not the only one. I get it. And if you're a man and you're making fun of me or you think that I'm doing this for clout, please remember that you came from a woman. And you might even have a sister. And who knows, tomorrow you might even have a daughter if you already don't have one. And just the same way that you can laugh at me, pray that you never have to feel the experience and the pain of having someone that you love be forced to doing something that they don't want to do because someone else wants to feel pleasure. Anyways, I'm out of here. I just wanted to talk and let you guys know what it was. Me voy. Solamente quería aclarar eso porque me dio un poquito de sentimiento ver la ignorancia de tanta gente que se burla del sentimiento de otra persona. No tengo necesidad de hacer nada por sonido porque como dije anteriormente, Gloria a Dios me va muy bien en la vida. Es una muchacha muy trabajadora, muy ambiciosa, muy luchadora. Solamente quise hablar de mi experiencia para dejarles saber a las otras mujeres que han vivido situaciones parecidas o igual o a las niñas 
que no están solas, no son las únicas. Entiendo el sentimiento. Y, y tenemos que utilizar nuestra voz, tenemos que dejar el miedo, porque yo por muchos años tuve miedo de que me encontrara, de que me buscara, de que me hiciera algún daño, que qué va a pensar la gente, qué va a decir la gente si yo digo esto, me van a juzgar, me van a señalar. Hoy por hoy ya no me importa. Quería decir mi verdad. Y esa es mi verdad. Y como yo hay muchas mujeres que tienen miedo de, de, de decir las cosas, de que la vayan a juzgar. ¿Sabes cuántas mujeres en este mundo han sido violadas, maltratadas, abusadas, to tocadas, eh, todo tipo de cosas y nunca han dicho nada por la vergüenza, por el temor, por el que dirán. A veces son secretos de familia que no están supuestas a salir fuera de la familia. Hay tantos tabús con ese tema que yo no, no, no quiero ser una más de ellas. No lo hago por sonido porque, como digo, no tengo necesidad de eso. No lo hago por drama, porque fue mi verdad, porque voy a mentir de algo como eso, ¿cuál es la necesidad? La gente se equivoca porque la gente a veces cree y ve a uno como artista, pero el artista no deja de ser una persona. Antes de yo ser artista y antes de ser famoso y antes de tener dinero, era una muchacha normal, igual que cualquiera, con un sueño de triunfar, de, de lograr mis metas. Le puede pasar a cualquiera, de igual manera le pasan a los hombres. A lo, hay muchos hombres, hay muchos niños que han sufrido de muchas violaciones, de muchos, to, muchos toqueteos, de, de mucho abuso, de mucho de todo, que nunca se han sentido cómodos de decir nada por la vergüenza, el temor, el que dirán, el que lo señalen. Estamos en una época donde la gente disfruta más sacar un celular y grabar a una persona pasando un mal momento que sacar una mano para apoyar o dar unas palabras de aliento. Pero bueno, ese es el mundo en que viví. Yo de mi parte me mantengo fuerte, estoy bien. Tengo mis momentos que como cualquier mujer y como cualquier persona me puede doler, me puede... Pero no me estoy victimizando, ni estoy esperando que nadie me tenga pena, ni lástima, ni nada por el estilo, porque yo estoy entera, no me falta nada, gloria a Dios. Pero no quiere decir que no pueda hablar de mis experiencias, porque como he tenido experiencias buenas, también creo que es importante que el artista hable de las experiencias malas que no solamente enseñe un mundo de fantasía, de ilusiones, de, de triunfo, de dinero, de logro, de, de carteras, de esto, no, pero que también diga la verdad, cómo uno llegó aquí, los trabajos, los sacrificios, todas las cosas que uno ha tenido que pasar para llegar donde uno está el día de hoy. Creo que es importante hablar de la jornada, de hablar del proceso, de la vida de uno para llegar donde uno está el día de hoy. Anyways, los quiero un montón y ahí hablamos. Did I miss something? Did Amara talk about this on Love & Hip Hop Miami or Love & Hip Hop Atlanta? If she did, please let me know what scene it was so then that way I could go back and watch it. You, you know, I have watched the show at this point because it's so boring. But this is very important. I definitely would have checked this part out to hear this story. And for the record, I just realized something. I don't mean to be crass or anything. I don't mean to say anything negative right now. But I will say this. She treats people horribly. I'm not saying everybody, but I've seen her treat people like straight up crap on that show, Love and Hip Hop, from Veronica Vega to Shay, shout out to Shay Johnson, shout out to Veronica Vega and some others. Just look at the things. I think his name was DJ Hollywood or something like that. Remember that guy? He's like a music producer or whatever. The one who wanted her to take her wig off <laughs> so that that way she could be more marketable. But her real estate career took off, so she doesn't need music anymore. And her music wasn't selling because it sucks, but... Remember, she didn't want Veronica Vega working with this guy, but then she ended up working with the guy. Yeah, so, ooh, uh, disclaimer, everything in this video is all alleged. Everything she's saying, everything that I'm saying, it's all alleged, okay, for the record. I have another Amara La Negra video that I want you guys to check out. I'm going to pin it to the top of the comment section. If you watch it, be sure to click thumbs up and be sure to leave a comment. Before you go, make sure you click thumbs up, subscribe, and choose all notifications for more Meat Magazine. I had to turn my microphone off because I just realized something. I'm going to mess around and say something in this video that's going to piss a lot of people off. And then a lot of people could be like, you know what? You're canceled. And, you know, it's like, come on. I, I, you know, I already have enough problems to deal with being reverse well endowed. So, yeah, I'm trying not to get canceled out here. Yeah, let me know what you guys think about it below. And I got to go.